Thank you and thank you very much. Asif, على النمط الوقت. صباح الخير. Um, first of all, I would like to thank my dear professor, Dr. Sana Yusuf, uh, for this kind invitation to the annual International Congress of the Arab Society of Pediatric Clinical Nutrition, and all as uh, eminent board member. Thanks for uh, the session chairpersons. Um, in 15 minutes, uh, we will go through a planned and controlled tactical and strategic movement in TBN to handle and to take hands of these very little fragile creatures in NICU. So what is the indication for parental nutrition in premature infants? Most preterm infants Pre, uh, uh, parental nutrition should be considered as a short-term bridge to provide nutritional support until full enteral nutrition can be provided. And uh, the, the main indications for parental nutrition in premature infants uh, immediately after birth to provide essential nutrient and the nutrition till enteral feeds are commenced and advanced. The prematurity clinical guidelines like the follows. Uh, premature infants uh, less than 30 weeks gestational uh, or less than one kilogram or older than 30 weeks gestation but unlikely to achieve full enteral feeds by day five. Infants are uh, at high risk of neck less than 30 weeks gestation or uh, older than 30 weeks with absent or reversed fetal umbilical artery flow or infants with prenatal asphyxia. During periods of acute gastrointestinal malfunction, uh, for example, at septic ileus uh, or necrotizing uh, enterocolitis, like neck, in omphalocele and the gastros cases. And when infants are felt to be too sick to receive enteral feeds during treatment with high dose pressors or, uh, or uh, with ECMO. So what is the phases of parental nutrition in units? We have early parental nutrition and full parental nutrition. The early parental nutrition or early BN usually with, within few hours after delivery, this phase of parental nutrition is intended to be started as soon as possible after infant's birth. And its primary goal is to prevent excessive catabolism by providing energy and protein Secondary goals include prevention of hypocalcemia. In this phase, parental nutrition usually contains only dextrose, amino acids, and calcium, but not sodium, potassium, magnesium, or phosphorus. And this is a very important note. Intravenous levels can be included in the initial prescription or added on the first or second day of life. After the early nutrition, we continue with the premies with full parental nutrition and in this uh, case, this phase of parental nutrition is intended to meet the entire nutritional needs of the infant and support normal rates of growth. To do this, it must contain a wide range of essential nutrients and sufficient protein and energy to support growth. What do you know about concentrating or custom TBN? The practice of concentrating or custom TBN is a practice of subtracting the volume of enteral feeding and the continuous infusions uh, and the fat emulsions from the total fluid allowance to calculate the volume of TBN. Why early parental nutrition is crucial in premies? Because of low tissue energy stores, glycogen is only produced during the third trimester. 
obligatory tissue catabolism protein breakdown is bigger than uh, half a gram per kilogram per day because of essential fatty acid uh, deficiency, because of delayed tolerance to, ent to full enteral nutrition and disturbance in circulating uh, electrolytes and glucose intolerance and incomplete catch-up growth and development. Here we go with the Aspen recommendations of appropriate uh, parenteral nutrition dosing for, new, for neonates and preemies. Uh, here we see uh, protein and dextrose and the injectable uh, lipid emulsion requirements in preterms and terms. And here we begin then advance, then uh, go through uh, to reach the goals. And the, 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 uh, the main concern here is is that we begin protein with one to um, um, average from three to four maximum uh, gram per kg per day. Then we reach to the goals to uh, three to four for preterms and four terms for, uh, uh, to reach 2.5 to three uh, gram per kg per day. Here we, uh, we take care about in uh, glucose infusion rate in the extrudes and uh, the lipid injectable emulsion also. The crucial factor is the calcium to phosphorus ratio. We all know that bone mineralization is also affected by the ratio of calcium to phosphorus in PN. And the optimal ratio is approximately 1.7 to 1 when we measure it by milligram to milligram or mass ratio, or 1.3 to 1 when we measure it by molar ratio as recommended by Aspen. Hypophosphatemia occurs in up to 60% of preterm infants receiving parental nutrition. In many cases, this can be explained by low absolute intakes of phosphate or by high calcium to phosphate ratio. And the hypophosphatemia and the hypercalcemia were more likely if amino acids uh, were initiated early without sufficient phosphorus or phosphate intake. Hypercalcemia in preterm infants usually is, is caused by low absolute intake of phosphate, a high calcium to phosphate ratio, or delayed introduction of phosphate containing parenteral nutrition. I mean when beginning parenteral phosphate after 72 hours of life. It is important that calcium not to be given without phosphate or phosphate without calcium for more than one day or two because, of, uh, because this can quickly lead to hyper or hypocalcemia and also because bone mineralization requires concurrent availability of both calcium and phosphate. If calcium or phosphorus are admit, administered alone, ionized calcium and serum phosphorus should be assessed each day. Why we are afraid of giving uh, phosphorus in parenteral nutrition? Because of we are afraid from uh, calcium and the phosphate uh, precipitation. One factor limiting the delivery of high amount of calcium and the phosphate is the risk of formation of uh, precipitates of bi-basic calcium phosphate crystals that have been associated with pulmonary thromboemboli, uh, which can be fatal to uh, infants. Like we see, calcium can um, make a, a chemical reaction with, phos with phosphorus, then it gives calcium phosphate, which, which precipitate in the uh, parenteral nutrition and can lead to a thromboembolism. The only compatible uh, phosphorus salt is the sodium glycerophosphate, uh, which can be available in TBN and it is safe to be added in TBN. 
Now we will discuss the factors that reduce the risk of precipitation and, and it includes the lower pH of the uh, TPN, the addition of cysteine to parenteral nutrition because this lowers pH, the higher concentration of amino acids, the use of monobasic salts, phosphate salts, which is more soluble than the bibasic salt, the use of calcium gluconate, which is less likely to precipitate than calcium chloride, the high glucose concentration, the prevention of excessive warming of the solution, and using BN less than 20 hour, 24 hours after it was formulated. Now we will talk about order of mixing when we mix uh, TBN by manual compounding. We first add dextrose, and this notes is, is mainly for uh, nutrition support pharmacists uh, who are here today. We uh, we first add dextrose, amino acids, trial waters, then we add phosphate. Then we add other electrolytes except for calcium and the trace elements. We mix well to ensure phosphate is evenly distributed uh, and to prevent precipitation with calcium. Then we add calcium. We observe for precipitates or contaminants. Then we add lipids F3 in one formulation and we take care of not to mix dextrose and lipids directly because the low pH of dextrose can destabilize the lipid emulsion. Then we add vitamins at last as close to the time of parenteral administration as possible in acute care setting or just before infusion. Thank you, I've finished and I'm waiting for any questions. <laughs>